we were shooting down in in Long Beach, which is a, a bit out of, of LA, not too far, but, and it was the day the Challenger uh, blew up and we yeah. were out, of, we were out kind of in the ocean, not in the ocean, we were on the dock and, and one of the crew guys started just, you know, going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And we all stopped and we looked, it was, and that kind of put a pall on that day, certainly, you know, it was very, that is what sticks out. One of the things that really sticks out in my mind about the show was that tragedy. It's just awful. But of course we continued shooting. I suppose, yeah. Kim, in terms of that, obviously most of your scenes, you mentioned that police uh, female officer and there was a sort of, um, sort of, dare I say, the chase uh, in terms of uh, uh, Dirk Benedict trying to woo his sort of uh, magic in terms of whether his uh, intentions were good or bad or everything. But anytime there was a pretty lady inside uh, Templeton Peck, had to have a go and see how he got on. And uh, was that, uh, did you find that sort of lines and that uh, amusement, that banter back and forth with Dirk, uh, very entertaining on set? Yes, yes, it, they were all, they were all fantastic. They were all so sweet. And it was really only my, I think in my memory, was my, sorry, in my, in my memory, it was my first show in LA. I'd moved back from New York. I was living in New York and I did a soap opera and I moved back and I, I thought it was my first show. Um, it was that or Remington Steel because they did them both kind of very close together. I think Remington Steel might have aired first, but I think I shot 18 first. Um, but I had worked. I'd been working for a while. So it, they were all they were all lovely. One of my other major memories was um, we were walking and George Papard said to me, oh, you know, if you if you need to rest, if you want to rest, you can come into my trailer and rest. I was married I, I, and it just, I was so nice. I just went, oh no, I'm fine. My my honey wagon's fine. It's all, it's all good. You know, da, 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 da. Years later, <laughs> I kind of went, oh, I've had a lot of girls went and rested in George Papard's trailer. I don't know anything about that, but I, I just think, hmm, maybe that was a, come on. I don't know. <laughs> I was too, Dirk did not. I don't remember him hitting on me at all or anything. And I'm not saying George Papard was hitting on me, but... It was an interesting turn of phrase for him to to offer me his trailer. Mm. But he was, they were all lovely. They were all sweet. Um, my other major memory is I we were in a scene and I think I'm behind something and Mr. T was next to me and I had to say something. And Mr. T gave me a line reading. Yeah. You know, you should sit like this. And he told me how I should say it. And I'm just like, okay. I'm getting line reading on acting from Mr. T. <laughs> I and took was it. there a bit of nervousness involved in that? Obviously, giving the frame, the size, the demeanor, the man, and Mr. T saying, you need to do it like this. You're like, like this. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I, I, you know, most of the time actors do not give you line readings. That is just not something that you do anyone should do but it was so funny and I remember coming home and telling my husband going I got a line reading from Mr. T <laughs> it's just I don't even know what to do with that because the man was lovely but not the greatest actor we've ever seen on camera but he was nice <laughs> yeah and he was huge it was pretty funny <laughs> I suppose Kim one of the main dare I say the DA team had around that season the uh, one of the well, he was a good guy, but he was hired by the government to capture the the A team. Was the character Bullwright and played by the wonderfully talented Jack King, who's no longer with us. And uh, have you any memories of interacting with uh, Jack at all? I don't. I don't. You've probably watched the episode. I haven't rewatched it forever, and I don't know if I had any even scenes with him. And I don't remember um, yeah. any interactions with him. It was Mr. T and George, and and. Dirk and the rest of them but mostly I worked with Tom and um yeah I my other memory is I can't you can look it up and I can't remember the director's name but he was a, had done a every show up to that point I mean he was an old director and um 
I was used to being placed on a soap because in a soap, you've got three cameras and, and the directors go, you have to stand here, you have to look here, you know, because of the camera angles. But on a one camera show, they, you usually do a rehearsal and kind of find where you're going to stand and how you're going to say it and what, you know, and then the, then they place you, then the directors say, okay, mark them and you get your spots marked. This director, I can't remember his name, he said, you stand there, you stand there, you move there, mark it. And I'm like, oh, 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 okay. You know, it was like, there was no messing around. He had it marked out, he knew what he wanted. And I believe he was the director that the martini shot was named for. Okay. And I don't know if you know what that is, but it's the, um, you know, it's like the last shot of the day. You get the last yeah. shot. You keep, he would go, ha literally go and have a martini. So, <laughs> so, and I think he was the one who they kind of came up with it. I could be wrong about that, but we were out by 3.30. Yeah. <laughs> it was we, he was, he was on time, under time. He got it done quickly, efficiently, but the actors just kind of went, oh, okay. And I remember the guys going, yes, yeah, just the way he does it. So <laughs> don't fight it. I'm like, okay, <laughs> tell me where to stand. Tell me what to do. <laughs> and Kim, I actually remembered vividly seeing you and it's almost like, dare I say, I know you're a tarty figure, but it almost feels like there, there's an innocence to your police sort of uniform. Did you actually like the outfit they put you in uh, in terms of that police uniform? It was sort of, sort of say, it looked very sort of no, novice, but sort of very friendly, friendly sort of looking. At, it didn't look like a woman of real strong authority. No, no, no. I don't think I was supposed to. I think I was supposed to be the young, kind of innocent police person looking for her brother. Um, yeah, I, did I like it? It wasn't my favorite outfit I've ever worn on camera. <laughs> you know, pants and a blue shirt. But I think they fit it to me pretty well. I think, you know, it wasn't like they just threw on a police uniform. They fit you for it. So it wasn't terrible. But, you know, I've had better outfits. <laughs> for sure and I suppose Kim one of the things people say was during break time and canteen time things used to get an awful lot of interesting on set in terms of the banter the boys would have their masculinity sort of talks the testosterone would be going Mr. T used to go dare I say very heavy on the food and the snacks and uh, that were uh, on offer in terms of that did you get to witness any sort of stuff like that in between takes? Well, other than other than George you know offering me his his trailer <laughs> um for a no, quick rendezvous and back again to session know, I honestly don't know if that was the yeah. intention or if he was just being kind yeah my my husband's like, oh Kim, no. <laughs> he was I'm like, I don't remember it that way. But um I don't remember. We were on location a lot. We weren't, you know, in a in a sound stage. We were out on okay. in Long Beach shooting out there a lot. So most of the time when you were off, they all went to their trailers and kind of just hung out. It wasn't like I think they all took their lunches in their trailers that time that I remember. Yeah. I don't remember. It was, I just remember getting the line reading and going, oh, I better go back to acting class. <laughs> and Kim, I suppose Dirk is plays this charismatic sort of guy, this swagger, but off stage, off stage he's very quiet, sort of reserve man, a passive man compared to the rest of them, while uh, Dwight Schultz then is very bubbly, very energetic, very sort of friendly, can talk about anything and talk talk to the house, come home, I can strike up a conversation with, I dare I say, a stranger. And did you notice that as well, that Dwight was very, Dwight Charles was very bubbly, engaging with you, and then maybe Dirk liked to keep himself, keep a bit to himself when the, when the camera wasn't rolling? Yeah, it's like I said, I don't really have a vivid memory of Dirk. So I think that must be the case that he was pretty quiet. I do. I know he was walking when George offered that he was walking with us. We were walking someplace and he, he, um, he was with us, but yeah, I think he must've been, cause I don't, like I said, I don't really have, again, it's 40 years ago, but I don't have a great vivid memory of Dirk. So I think he probably was pretty quiet and 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 Dwight certainly was the 
more gregarious of the of them, you know. But George was really funny and talked a lot. And Mr. T didn't talk that much unless he was giving you a line reading. <laughs> And I suppose, Kim, having the A-team on your resume uh, and having a credit for the A-team, now you had done one or two projects in Los Angeles, as you mentioned uh, there, but did it still open an awful lot of doors for you immediately afterwards to say that you'd appeared on the A-team? You'd appeared in a prominent episode as well in terms of uh, season five as well, during the height of its uh, sort of popularity cable network TV show all across the st United States, Canada at that stage at its peak powers. Did you reveal the knock-on effects maybe for the following months afterwards? Did you think it maybe opened up opportunities for you that mightn't have opened up? Now, other options would have might have come along, but did it yeah. do you a good bit of favours, dare I say, as well? Um, I was working, uh, like I said, I came out and it was, I was under contract to NBC at the time. Okay. So I had a lot of jobs and uh, there was a writer strike, which kind of messed up again, like we just okay. had. I was uh, which, there to witness that last one. So <laughs> this is the uh, first one. That one was the 86 was bad. It was a okay. bad one. Um, but I, I, so I had a lot of auditions and I was auditioned, like I said, I did Remington Steel around that time. I did um, Hotel around that time. So I did a lot, but I did work and audition a lot for Stephen Cannell. Um, yeah. That probably brought me into his office quite a bit more. And he was lovely. He was always a lovely, lovely man to audition for. And um, yeah. So I don't know that it opened a lot of doors because I don't know that the A-team was considered in America like prime television in terms of quality acting, but it was a very popular show. Mm. So, um, yeah, no, I don't know that it opened a lot of doors except Stevens. I got in to see him quite a bit. Yeah. And obviously being when you found out you were going to be cast for the A team, was there a sense of uh, excitement involved? Because obviously you knew probably the cast that were attached to it in terms of George Papar, Breakfast and Tiffany's, Audrey Hepburn, then Dirk Benedict, oh. Battlestar Book. Battlestar Galactica probably might have heard of Mr. T in terms of the wrestling world and probably Dwight Schultz was probably the lesser known name it was a novelty at the time now the A-Team made him famous but I suppose for you you're probably looking and saying yeah I grew up as a girl with my mother and father he probably watched George prepared uh, movies on our sort of TV screens as well sure. so there was, all, there was probably looking at that and thinking James Garner George prepared the two big icons of the 80s yeah. did that moved in from movies to tv series and here's a chance to to share a set with one of them was that you were you was there nervous excitement about that i try i think my husband is a, was is a huge movie buff mm -hmm. and knew everybody from everything and loved obviously and i, and I love breakfast at tiffany's too but um so he i think he probably was more excited that i was working with george Bard than i was he was very old. Um, <clears throat> at the time, as again, I said, I was I was very busy and I was pretty much going from show to show to show. Um, so there was always a nervous excitement. As a guest star, it's very difficult to, you're walking on a set with a group of people who know each other well, who work together. You know, they're a well-oiled machine and you're kind of the chink in the, in the, in the gears. You're kind of like, I'm the new guy. And we were the new people. So it was, it's always nerve wracking when you go on a show, any show like that as a guest star is always hard, but they were very welcoming and they were very kind. Um, like I said, I worked with Tom a lot. So, and he was nice. So it, I don't think I had like butterflies about working with George Papard or anything mm. that I remember. And Kim, I on set there on the A team, there was probably times when you were on set where you're in between sort of takes and there were shooting other sequences and you probably got to see the stunt team and the stunt doubles of the A team uh, in oh, work gosh. and process uh, and see what they were capable of doing. And were you sort of taken back by the sheer, the sheer not only the sheer resemblance, but the sheer capabilities of the, the, the stunt guys who double for the main actors and their, and maybe the stunt team, the choreography in terms of what they were able to pull off in terms of these stunts? Yeah. 
I always give credit to the any stunt guys. They're amazing. And the, they were very good and they were very um, close match, I remember. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I don't know that I was taken aback because I had worked and, and you see them, but it, it is always remarkable to see those guys and women go out there and do these ridiculous, fantastic things that they do. And you're like, glad it's not me. I worked with um, Mark Harmon once who told me a great story that he, I won't go into it, but it was a long story where he was working and they asked him to do something. And he said, man, no. And he let, he goes, no, that's what they pay those guys for. I'm not taking away their jobs. That's their job, you know? And it turned out that it was a good thing he didn't do the stunt because it turned out badly. Um, okay. So, and I always remember that. So when anybody would say, hey, you want to do this? I'm like, yeah, no, no, I'm a good stunt person. That's their job. And I don't want to take their job from them. That's good. you know. So those, those stunt guys did earn their money for sure on the A-team because there was a lot and George Papard was not doing them. <laughs> so. Yeah. And Kim, in terms of uh, the A team and landing that role in terms of the talent agent, was this, did you hear back straight away after you, you, the audition was you sort of recruited for the role? Did you, did you have to go in the audition for the, that part? And was there a you know, bit at, of a wait? Yeah, at, the at that time, um, guest stars were cast pretty quickly, okay. although you... you you would get your audition and you'd have to drive over and get the material to wherever it was. And I think that was Sony. Um, I could be wrong, but I know it was on the east side, <clears throat> west side of LA. So, I, you know, you had to drive over, get the, go home, learn it for a day or so, and then go in and audition. And at that time in the industry, you would audition for at least the director, usually the director and a couple producers and the casting people. So they'd all be in the room. Um, and you go in and you do your audition and you'd leave. And within the day, usually, uh, the, you, usually within that day, you'd hear if you got the job or the next day, if they were having a lot of auditions, I don't remember specifically on the A team. I think I heard pretty quickly within, I think it was within the day yeah. they'd call your agent and say, Hey, you know, we're hiring Kim. <clears throat> And I suppose, uh, Kim, uh, in terms of the A team and in terms of when the episode came out and air and TV, were you with your uh, now husband, then maybe boyfriend at the time, or you was a partner, parents? And did you make a uh, when it premiered? Did you find out when it was coming out live uh, on cable TV? And uh, do you have any memories of sitting around with family and loved ones uh, watching that episode for the first time? I, it came out on, on network TV in America. That was network TV. And uh, yeah, you knew the time, you knew the dates, they gave you all of that. And I believe for the A team, we had some friends over to watch. <laughs> and one of my friends who was hysterically funny when I told him that Mr. T gave me a line reading, he, he when we watched the show, he's like, is that the line? Is that the line? <laughs> he kept going, is that the line he gave you? <laughs> so yeah, we definitely would watch the shows when they came out. Um, with friends, usually with friends. And yeah. it was always kind of like, it was hard because you never knew how much, especially as as a guest star, you never knew how much of you was going to be in the show, how much you know you were in it, if they would cut. Generally, if there was a big scene, you'd go, okay, this is all gonna be on the star. <laughs> I'm talking, but it's, the shot's gonna be, you know, George, not me. But I think they gave me a, a fair amount of screen time in that one. You know, you, you kind of, I think I was pleasantly surprised. I'm like, oh, I'm on it a lot. So, yeah, because you never knew. And I suppose uh, Kim Ulrich, uh, Kim Johnson Ulrich, what's happening in the life of you now in 2020? What are you up to these days? Dare I say, uh, in the troublesome times, uh, back from a major pandemic now to a strike, uh, to back, but... What is happening in the world that came outside of uh, everything else that's going on in the world today? Is there anything keeping you busy, said, occupied? You, you, we're not going back in time. You just said 2021. You did mean 2023, right? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking, I, I, I started off by talking about the COVID and yeah. everything. Well, I know. That sort Listen, of, last... It's been ongoing. It's been, you're, oh only my gosh. Sooner, you're only sooner back than you're out again, dare I say. Oh my gosh. 
you, you could have said, I would have believed you. It's like, is it 2021? The last several years have been such a blur and just such a massive <laughs> one thing after another. It's, it's, it's been a hard several years for everyone, I think. Um, I, I'm doing really well. I actually have um, a grandson and another one on the way. So I'm going to have a grandma. And I have my three dogs. One is sitting here. I'm petting him. One, um, I've, my hus- I've sort of semi-retired. In my mind, I've kind of retired. The whole industry has changed so much. And now it's all self-tape. Uh, you don't go into a room. You don't rarely do you see you never see the director or the producers you at most you see a casting person so uh the nice thing is you can do all that from home you can set it up and do your auditions i worked last summer not this summer the summer prior on all rise which was a show um i think it's airing right now in the united states i don't know about there but it was i did that was the last show i shot and it was fun and i had a good time but it was kind of like you know I don't know that I need to go on set at 5.30 in the morning anymore and work till 11 at night. And you know, it's not as much fun as that used. That used to be really fun. It's not so much fun anymore. My husband is still working and he's a he is a casting director and his show, um, the, what too, he has several shows, but one of them is The Boys, which is on Amazon Prime. And his new spinoff of The Boys, uh, Gen V, just started airing on Amazon Prime and it's terrific. It really is. It's very gory and bloody, but a very good show. And the cast is fantastic. So if anybody's out there, they want a new show to watch. Those are really his two new shows that are excellent. And he's working on a bunch of others. And we've all, none of us have been working because of the writer's strike and now the actor's strike. So again, all my friends and all of us are kind of sitting around going, well, <laughs> now what do we do? Because <laughs> it's, it's bad. It's really... Yeah. People don't realize that on any given set, there are 200 people working on the show, at least, you know, behind the scenes and in production and in makeup and hair and work. There's so many people, drivers who who work on any TV production or any movie production. And so when those go down, especially in LA and I'm sure in Canada now, it, that many people are out of work. It's a lot of people it affects. So it's been very difficult and hard for people. And I feel really um, sad that it's not over yet. I was hoping the actors would strike a deal. They have not yet. So we're kind of like, okay. I mean, we have I to ask. We for all, I think we all were hoping for that. So everything could get yeah. back to normal. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, it's kind of like, oh, please, you know, go back so we can all, so my husband can get out of my hair and work again <laughs> because he, <laughs> but he's working from home since COVID. He used to have an office and that kind of, now they're doing all, you know, all the auditions are on Zoom. It's crazy. It is crazy. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is, but it's been fun. I did want to go back to, um, I did work on Walker, Texas Ranger. Okay. And shot it in Texas quickly. And uh, his stunt, he had like three or four stunt people. He was the nicest man. He was so lovely, but he had, he'd beaten his body up, you know, doing all Choke. of the stuff. Yeah. yeah. He he destroyed his body, and so he had a kick a kick double, and he had a fight double, and he had a punching. Every he had doubles for everything. One of them was his son too. Yeah, so, uh, guys, they're great. They work okay. hard. They work hard indeed. And uh, Kim Ulrich, now for the final sentence, you and your sort of final memories of the A team. If you can sum up your whole experience of your time, that guest episode role in the A team, Beneath the Surface, March the 4th, 1986, season four, episode uh, 19. Uh, where you played the character Elaine. If you had to summarize your time in the A team in two sentences, what would you like those two sentences to read? Oh my goodness. Um, it was a great, a great group of people. And I had a lot of fun. It was tinged with the tragedy of the challenger so that we were all sad about that. Um, but my memory is that it was, it was one of my first or second shows. So in LA, so it was a lot of fun. 
a lot of fun. And on that note, this interview has been a lot of fun for me too. Uh, Kim Ulrich, uh, for me, Jim Conlon, stay safe, take care, God bless. Uh, you took part in the A-Team uh, Season 4, Episode 19, Beneath the Service in the A-Team, Good Guys, Bad Guys uh, documentary. You played a character, Elaine. So for me, Jim Conlon, to you, J Kim Johnson Ulrich, stay safe, take care, and God bless. Man. You too, God bless.